Oh, I pull up, I'm moving too smooth. I oh, I pull up, I'm moving too smooth. Yeah, I got colors, I got heels. I feel like Jizzy, I got views. I using baby like a mules. Play them like the ones and twos. Bow, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Chad Arms, aka Chetty Bobby, Olive Thirty, and we're here. On the Chetty Bobby 1130 channel, we're back with movie content, man. This is a video I've been interested to do, man. I've been wanting to do this. Um, I just had to get around to watching all the movies, okay? And this is going to be about the Paranormal Activity franchise. We're gonna, I'm going to go through and review each movie. It's not really a rankings video because, honestly, I think I have them ranked as they came out. Okay, so I just want to do, I do have the Blu-ray set, the six film set, I'll show that in just a minute. Um, but I watched some of them on that and I watched some of them on my Voodoo while I was at work um, and when I was off work and things like that. So we're going to talk about each one, man. If y'all have not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications and click all. That way every time I drop a video, you're going to be the first to find out about it. Play us. Also, if y'all are a fan of dope clothing, Into the AM. Um, this is where I got this shirt. I also got a hoodie from them. They make great, great clothing for plus size men and women. They make clothing for anywhere from, I think, small all the way up to 4X. They have great stuff, man. They have really like cool graphic tees and, and hoodies. They've got some like solid ones. I don't know if you've seen, if you just look it up, actually, if you want to purchase anything, they've got great deals going on. They actually gave me an affiliate link and it's in the description box and you get 10% off your order. They've got like three for 50 uh, deals going on shirts and stuff like that. So hit them up if y'all wanna get some really cool clothes and it'll uh, give me a little 10%, you know, it'll give you 10% off when you use my code and it gives me a little kickback, okay? So we're gonna get right into this, man. Y'all be sure to hit the subscribe button, follow me on Instagram at Chad Arm Show. Let's get right into it, man. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the Paranormal Activity franchise. Uh, this is the sixth film set I got at Walmart a while back. Um, and the cool thing about it is that it came with the digital copies of the entire collection um, on the receipt. It wasn't like a code that was in here, but it was on the receipt, which is awesome because I want to say that's a 40 or 30 or $40 deal if you buy that. So there you see, it's just plain Jane. Um, each one has its own dedicated disc. And there's six films in the franchise. And I've got my notes here, okay? So I'm gonna go look into them. We'll throw up the screen, the poster for Paranormal Activity 1 right here. And um, this movie was released on October 16th, 2009. Um, it was written and directed by Oren Pelly, and it starred Kate Featherston, Featherston and Micah Sloat, who were some that you, you know, are constants throughout the throughout the series. Now this is going to have spoilers. So, um, I want to read you this fun fact though, man. This is insane. This had a $15,000 budget and it grossed worldwide almost $194 million, bro. This had a $15,000 budget with almost a $200 million gross. Um, it says, after moving into a suburban home, a couple becomes increasingly disturbed by a nightly demonic presence. Okay, so we're going to talk about part one right here. I'm going to try to be quick and do like two to three minutes per movie so we're not here too long. Hopefully, we can keep it with under, under 30 minutes. So, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Micah and um, Katie move into this new house, and um, it is in 2005. 2005, 2006, 2006, I believe. And... Um, they're just excited about it. He's got a camera um, and he sets that up because she's um, seeing things and he's wanting to document it to see what happens. So that's basically what you're getting. That's your main deal, you know what I mean, throughout the movie. So in part one, this is what started it all. I thought this one was absolutely great, man. I loved it. Um, I just love the vibe of all these movies. Now, the way that you're going to see about all these movies, they all are just an arc. So it's going to be about, all of them are like an hour and a half or a little, little less. I think one of them is an hour and 40 minutes. But it's just a slow build to that last 10 to 15 minutes, okay? If you've never seen any of these movies, just go in knowing that. You do get some scares and some weird stuff going along the way. But part one, 
is definitely the best one to me. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the way that they had this done. You know, it looks, it felt super real. It didn't feel like they were acting really. Um, Katie and my and Mika, it's spelled Micah, but it's Mika. Um, they did a, they both did a great job, and they do a great job in this movie of giving you the feel that it's just a legit documentary style thing. Um, as the movie goes on, Katie keeps getting doing weird things like she's look she it shows like time lapse of like the security cameras while they're sleeping and she stands up and just stares at him for minute for hours on on end and as things get get worse she gets more and more um taken over and then the last 10 minutes is super creepy um really really dug that one okay i loved part one and as i and I'm, as i'm sitting here talking about it i don't really want to give you a lot of spoilers but because you pretty much kind of know what's going in, but part one is absolutely great, I think. Um, then we jump to Paranormal Activity Two. Okay, Paranormal Activity Two. We'll throw that up on the screen. Um, this was October twenty second, two thousand ten. So just a year later, they dropped this one. This was this was directed by Todd Williams. Katie Featherston's in this. It's also Mike Amika uh, Sloot. You have Molly. Um, and this one it says after experiencing what they think is a series of break-ins a family sets up security cameras around their home only to realize um, That the events unfolding before them are more sinister than they seem. So this is where things start to kind of get put together. So stuff happens in part one Part two takes place 60 days before what happens in part one, okay? And it's basically going to, this whole part two is focusing on Katie's sister's family, okay? Her sister's name is, um, Katie. No, her sister's name is, uh, what was her sister's name? Was it My Molly? Anyways, it doesn't matter. So her sister is living in this house with her husband and their daughter and their dog, okay? And their their young son. The girl, the older girl is a kid from her husband's previous marriage, okay? So you got Katie's sister is at this house. So this whole movie, they start seeing, of course in all these movies you have that one or two people that never believe anything. Nobody ever believes it, all oh, you're full of shit, the whole movie. It's just how hard movies are. And most of the time there's a pet that knows what's going on. So in part two, the whole movie focuses on Katie's sister's family, okay? And um, the stuff that goes on with that, it, it, you get a lot of stuff happening similar, and they all live in like super nice houses. They're all like well-off people, just huge homes. Um, and, and stuff gets really creepy. This is another one that I really did like. I really liked part two as well. You get a lot of creepiness going on and then some things happen towards the end and it all ties to get ties into part one i'll just say that this is another one that i have that i'm a big fan of i think part two is very very good um this is the same thing this one had a three million dollar budget and it made 177 million dollars i mean worldwide gross so they're just printing money with these movies part two i really enjoyed man i'd give part one like an eight I'd give part two like a seven. I, I think they're both really, really good. Then we jump to part three. Paranormal Activity 3 here. We'll throw that up on the screen for you. October 21st, 2011. So a year later, they're hitting you over the face with another one, right? This is directed by Henry Juiced and Ariel Schulman. And it says, in 1988, young sisters, Katie and Chris, Christy was her sister's name. I'm so sorry about that a minute ago. Katie and Christy befriend an invisible entity who resides in their home. So this takes place in 1988, okay? Other stuff was 2006. This takes place like 18, 19 years previous when they were kids. And it gives you the origin story of Katie and Christy and how messed up those they were as kids. So that's the whole plot of that, of the third one. Um, 1988, yeah, like I said, that's what it was saying there. Um, this one, let's see how this one did. Oh my God, man, this had a $5 million budget and made $207 million worldwide. So they are, this is even part three. I mean, three years, 
this thing grossed almost six hundred million dollars. The, the franchise, but only spending like five and a half million dollars. It's insane, bro. Um, part three, I do enjoy part three, but it is, it's still creepy, but I don't put it up there with part one and two. I still like part three though. I still like part three. Don't, don't, not, I'm not saying it's not good. I enjoyed all these except for the last one. I didn't really like the last one. We'll get into that in a minute. But part three is just an origin story of the first, uh, giving you what what happened to these two girls as kids that made part one and two happen the way they happened, okay? Um, overall, I thought part three was really well done. It's that same vibe as parts one and two. I'd give it a six. So you gotta, I'd give part one an eight, part two a seven, part three I'd give a six. I still liked it. Um, then we get into part four. Part four is another one that I did like. Um, this one's from October 19th, 2012. So again, they're just, I mean, $5 million budget, $142 million gross worldwide. They're still just making so much money with these films. This one was uh, was directed by Henry Juice and Ariel Shulman. Again, same guys from part three. And um, it has been five years since the disappearance of Katie and Hunter. So we'll just say this at spoiler alert. Part two ends with Katie who's been possessed obviously from the first one taking uh, her sister's kid Hunter that's how part two ends part three is, is is 18 years later when they were kids origin story part four is five years after part two happened you see what I'm saying so it's like 2011 okay um, and a suburban family witnessed strange events in their neighborhood when a woman and a mysterious child move in so this is just a, another a random family um, move in, and they've got a they've got a daughter and a son. The son's adopted. The daughter is not, obviously. Um, and it's basically about the, the the young daughter, really. It's what it's mainly about, and the son. So there's this kid that's like mysteriously just showing up at like the kid the, the other boys soccer games. He lives across the street. He just roams over and goes in their their playhouse and is always around them. Well, his mom dis like goes to the goes to the hospital. So he they let him stay in that house with them for a few days because he has nowhere else to go. Well, this kid's a little freaking Damien Omen motherfucker. Okay, so that's what this whole movie's about. This this one kid from across the street is trying to get the other kid, okay? So, this movie, um, the kid's name is Wyatt. Well, the kid across the street, the weird kid, his name's Robbie, right? So, Robbie is trying to get Wyatt to come over to the other side, pretty much. So, the whole that's what that whole movie's about. And this movie ties in all the other ones because Katie in, in turn the Katie character um, it turns out that the son the son Wyatt is actually Hunter five years later he's just got he's been adopted and he's got a whole nother family and he's changed his name they, his name's not Hunter his name's Wyatt so that again these are all spoilers but that's what happens in part four Katie's character who's disappeared for five years is is the mom of the other kid Robbie and she's trying to get back Hunter her nephew who she you know take took took in the second one so part four I thought was I thought was solid I liked part four it doesn't get near as good of reviews as part the other ones do I liked part four though I'd give part four like a six out of ten um, I liked it as much as part three I actually kind of Maybe liked it a little better, to be honest. Um, then we get to the next two. Paranormal Activity 5, the marked ones. This was January of uh, 2014. January 3rd, 2014, this one came out. Now see, now we're looking at a $5 million budget and it grossed $90 million. Only $90 million. This is back when everybody was going to the movies now, man. Um, this was uh, written and directed by Christopher Landon. Uh, so, different guy. And this is when a young man becomes the target of a malevolent entity. He must uncover its true intentions before it takes complete control of him. And this has got a guy named Jesse, Hector, and Marisol are the main three. It's a Hispanic family. 
and and their I think it's their grandmother, their aunt Irma. She lives in the house as well. It's mainly about those three kids, and um, oh sorry, yeah, those three kids and the the older lady. This one's got nudity. This one's got more gore. Um, this one's more of a. This one is more of a violent one. It's got more, like I said, it's got nudity. It's got more cursing. It's got, so it's a little different in that sense. They went a little bit more extreme with it. This movie, some kind, in, in some ways, it reminds me of a movie called Afflicted. Now I know Afflicted is actually a vampire film, but just the way that the, the, the stuff happens to the to the young guy after he gets bitten or whatever, it's kind of similar in this movie, even though it's not vampire related. It's paranormal. But um, some things happen, and I thought this one was really solid, man. This one gets better ratings than part four. I would probably put it up there. I, I, I'd give it a six, too. I think it was good. The way this one goes is it's the main kid. Um, the main kid is um, Jesse. Jesse's the main, the main kid. He's the one that gets compromised. <laughs> um, and... So that's kind of where we're at with those. It comes around though, where when things hit the fan and it's this whole group of people that have been taken over, Katie comes back around. You see, so Katie, it ties her back in, okay? Thought five was good. I really enjoyed part, enjoyed part five, Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. I'd give, it a, I'd give it a six out of 10. So I'd give three, four, and five all six out of 10s. I think they were all solid. Then we get to the last one, which is Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. Now, this was October of 2015. Um, this one was a $10 million budget and grossed $78 million worldwide. Did not like this one. I'd give this one like a 3 out of 10. And the reason why, it's not a terrible movie. Just in this franchise, it, it's trying to be it's trying to be conjuring it's trying to be it's trying to be one of those and it gets away from what paranormal activity was I feel like and granted it's supposed to, so what happens this one is is directed by Gregory Plotkin using a special camera that can see spirits a family must protect their daughter from an evil entity with a sinister plan what happens in this it's 2013 okay they move into a house the house that the, the two girls lived in as kids in 1988. Um, and the camera and some VHS tapes were left there at the house. So the husband finds it and he's doing a whole, he's obsessed with the cameras. It's, it's got all kinds of different, um, it's, a, it's a special camera. And again, it's a husband, wife, and a daughter. Also, you got the husband's brother in here that's in it a lot. Um, and of course, the girl, it's just your classic is going after the little girl. Toby is the character that you hear about in a lot of these. That's the demonic paranormal spirit that's trying to take over take over the is, is Toby. So I didn't mention that till now, but when you see that in the movies, that's gonna be a, a constant. Um this movie just didn't do it for me because they were trying to be too fancy. They were doing they were showing way too much of like the black CGI paranormal spirit in the movie. I just wasn't feeling this one. I feel like they tried to be conjuring Annabelle. They tried to do that style, and I just wasn't feeling it. So I'd give it like a I'd give it like a four out of ten, um, which is it got a four point six. And it's funny it got the same rating as part three or part four. I thought part four was way better than this one. I'm being generous giving it a four because I didn't really enjoy this one. But it's not a bad movie. I just in this franchise, it's definitely my least favorite. I, like I said, I go, I think. You know, I rank them the way that they came out. I think they've got, I like each one less. But I still enjoy this franchise, man. I had only seen part one and two until a couple of days ago, and I just powered through these. Because um, I'm going to start doing franchise reviews and movie reviews on this channel a lot. And of course, Triple Flicks Mafia, be sure to subscribe to that. But overall, man, I, I suggest checking out the Paranormal Activity franchise. You don't really have to get, you don't definitely don't have to watch the last one. You really don't have to watch Ghost Dimension, even though I liked it. But I suggest checking out the first four. I, I, I liked I liked the franchise. It's creepy as hell. Just know going in, it's an hour and a half movie usually. 
and it's a build until that last 15, 20 minute payoff. And I think that it pays off well in all of them. I just don't like the last movie, okay? So with that being said, hopefully y'all enjoyed this review, this franchise review of the Paranormal Activity six film uh, series. Um, we're gonna be working on some other stuff. I think I'm gonna do Leprechaun. I think that's gonna be the next one that I tackle. So y'all be sure to comment below. Let me know what y'all thought of the review. Let me know what y'all want me to review next when it comes to franchises or just horror movies in general. Subscribe to the Triple Flix Mafia channel. I've got a 31 days of horror going up on those every day for this month. And again, man, follow me on Instagram at Chad Arm Show. Love, peace, and hair grease, baby. Yo, let go of